we're talking about electrical safety devices and this is the the primary safety device in your home it's called your electrical system ground now this system ground requires that it be tagged and prior to about the year 2000 they were connected directly to the cold water main of the building that's this pipe here if there is a huge voltage surge such as from lightning this system the ground that I'm touching with my pen will carry that voltage to the cold water main and send it into the earth every home in the United States requires to have a ground like this or a ground uh, another ground which I will show you in a few minutes the primary components include this clamping device that I am touching with my pen then the bonding strap which is right along here and that bonding strap must be connected back then to the conduit which goes back to the electrical system this is our conduit without this there can be electrical current running around the building uh, that could electrocute somebody under unique conditions if you don't have one of these in your building or if you don't have a driven electrical ground at the building's exterior you'll see that in a minute you're going to have a major electrical problem so take the 20 minutes to examine your own home and look for this bonding strap this tag and the wire that's uh, next to it that illustrates that the equipment is properly grounded I would say that uh, maybe less than one percent of all the buildings that I look at don't have this electricians tend to be very cautious and their work overall tends to be good and it um, it underlines and emphasizes the importance of having a licensed electrical contractor and not a handyman doing your work now if we can switch over to here for a second this is what a handyman does and this is another electrical deficiency that you should look for in your home we usually find open electrical boxes like this above ceiling tiles in garages or in attic spaces where the last person present doing the electrical work assumes that no one else is going to see it these wires are supposed to be placed inside the box and the box is to have a cover on that now you can't tell this but this space is only about six foot tall if we had a tall electrical contractor down here who was bald headed and hit some of these wires without nuts on them he could be electrocuted this is problematic also these are commonly uh, chewed by rats and mice who can actually live off of the insulation that's on the cover of the wires here's the second most popular electrical ground found throughout the United States it's called a driven ground rod now this driven ground rod as you can see is about two inches above the surface of the concrete frankly it's supposed to be left flush to the concrete but uh, the code official needs to examine that it's present so electrical contractors leave it a couple inches above the ground to confirm its presence the purpose of this ground is exactly the same as the purpose of the ground that we saw in the building that was attached to the cold water main it takes any high voltage and carries it through this bonding strip into the copper ground rod where it is sent into the earth and where the electricity dissipates now this ground only gets used under a very high voltage situation such as a lightning strike.